Hello everybody. Welcome to another lecture demo video. And today what we are going to be learning about is perspective. I'm going to talk with you about the history of perspective and show you a few artists and then give you a demonstration. So what we're going to start with is this. I've shown you this book before, The Art of Responsive Drawing by Nathan Goldstein, or Goldstein, and I highly, highly recommend this book. I love this book. In chapter five, he starts to talk about perspective, and I wanted to read you this definition of it because I think it is a fantastic explanation of perspective. Now, before I do that, I want to show you what I mean by perspective. So as you can see here, and here, perspective basically is the way of drawing that shows that you are going back into space in the image. So that is what we will be talking about today and what we will be learning about. Perspective, a definition. For the responsive artist, the term perspective embraces virtually every visual cue to the disposition of volumes in space. It is an implicit condition of any form, scale, location, and direction in a spatial field. Using this broader meaning of perspective, we discover its presence in all drawings that convey a convincing impression of masses arranged in some logical spatial order. Even primitive works show some rudimentary, though possibly subconscious, employment of perspective. As in this figure here, which is a rock painting from a South African museum in Cape Town. Where the smaller figures on the left appear to be located farther back in the spatial field. The broader interpretation of the term perspective namely as clues to the appearances of forms in space, may reassure the student who feels confronted with a complex and rather dry system. Actually, for most artists, the exact and exacting complexities that stem from the basics of perspective hold little interest. Moreover, a preoccupation with perspective generally restricts, restricts inventive freedom. Because perspective deals with appearances, the student knows more about the subject than he realizes. In fact, he has been using many of the basic principles and probably sensing others. What he needs to do is to clarify and expand his understanding of these principles to benefit from the specific information and control they provide. A knowledge of perspective is helpful in three ways. First, it serves as a checklist for uncovering unintended distortions of the subject's actualities. Second, it encourages the drawing of more complex and or interesting subjects, which the student might otherwise avoid. Third, it enables us to regard space and volume clues that we might otherwise not consider. A number of perspective systems have been devised in the past. Ancient Egyptian, Persian, and Oriental artists developed visually lucid and aesthetically pleasing systems. There have been others the system normally used in the Western world is called linear perspective. Like all other systems, it is not completely successful in projecting real volumes in real space onto a flat surface without some distortion. It differs from all other systems in being based upon what forms in space look like when observed from a fixed position with one eye closed. So, I wanted to give you the start of that. I'm not going to read to you this whole thing, but I just wanted to give you the gist of what perspective, what a thought on perspective might be. It is basically learning how to create the illusion of space on a two-dimensional surface. So like he was talking about in this ancient cave art drawing, how the illusion of the fighters going back into space because they are smaller over here as opposed to the larger figures on the right. And then here, this is Vermeer de, de Left, <laughs> how in this space it looks like he is looking back into the space because of how the fence 
is going back into the space that you see in the in the foreground and then it is leading to the midground which leads to the background this is the perspective drawing and here this is another example how there are two streets going back to seemingly two different points so there is different thoughts dealing with linear perspective linear meaning it is more in a line this way or this way an aerial perspective as if you are viewing from above. So linear perspective is based on six principles, relative scale, overlapping or blocking, relative scale being what this may look like in, compar in comparison to the size of the building in the, for in the foreground as opposed to the size of the building in the background. Overlapping or blocking, when you can overlap different objects to help create depth. Relative distance and position, like I was saying, etc., etc. We're not going to go into every single thing that they talk about in this book, but I just wanted to show you how this is the base of creating space. So this is one point perspective where there is a horizon line that everything leads to that one vanishing point. So there is a horizon line and a vanishing point. That is very important. Here, here is the horizon line and the vanishing point is going backwards that way. Then you get into more in-depth perspective. There is one, two, and three point perspective and even more. So in both two and three-point perspective, the vanishing points should not be placed too close together. So this is one-point perspective where everything is going to one vanishing point. Then two-point perspective is, say you're at the street corner and you're looking at a building and this side of the building is going towards this vanishing point and this side of the building is going towards this vanishing point. And that is what is going on here, the two-point perspective. This is multi-vanishing points and that is very complex. We are going to focus on one and two point perspective today because as you see, this can get incredibly complex and you can do this and apply this to so many different ways of drawing and painting and sculpture and you can do this in every form of visual art and it is just a wonderful, wonderful way to create space. I wanted to show you a couple examples of artists who may help inspire you for this. I really encourage this book as well, The World's Most Influential Painters and the Artists That They Inspired. So what's really cool about this is it talks about different uh, painters and it shows the Italian master, how brilliantly he also uses perspective and every single detail is based on that perspective that's what makes it so believable now i wanted to move show you from i wanted to show you the realistic side of perspective and then i wanted to show you how you can break it up into uh, using it in many different styles. So I wanted to show you Claude Monet. He was a French impressionist where he was not a realist artist, but he used perspective realistically in his impressionistic painting. So what he did was he looked at perspective in landscape from real life and he used it in a totally different way from the Renaissance painters, as you can see. So as you can tell, this is a believable space. This is a believable space, even though it is not technically realistic. And he did that in all of his works. You see these two women are in the foreground and you can tell that this is moving backwards. This one especially, Clearly there is a vanishing point here that he works with. Then I wanted to show you another Impressionist artist named Henry Matisse as 
perspective does not apply to only landscape in uh, architecture and landscape, but it can also apply to rooms and it can apply to windows and it can apply to objects. I just wanted to show you an example of Matisse's beautiful perspective paintings in this. It's, a, it's simply a window with flowers and it's clearly going out into the world through the window and he does that by utilizing this as a vanishing point for the windows, for the doors. And I just wanted to show you that in this street corner here by uh, Ernst Kirschner is another example of that perspective. He was inspired by Matisse. I just love this book. So I just wanted to show you some examples of artists in the past Art, histor art history, art historical artist. I don't know what I'm saying. It's the end of the day. I'm sorry. Now I also wanted to show you some contemporary artists. This book, get it, I'm telling you. This is a, an amazing, amazing book called Drawing Now Eight Propositions. I wish I could show you every single piece in here, but today I'm going to focus on some of the artists who utilize perspective. These are artists who take traditional perspective and they break it up. So like I was saying, from the realists, from the Renaissance artists to the Impressionists, here is, are some contemporary artists who break up perspective in a new way as well. Kevin Appel, I truly love his work. He clearly utilizes vanishing points and he uses the raw line and transparent shapes to show a space that is not realistic, but it looks believable. It literally looks like you could enter into every single drawing. And I find that fascinating that he uses the rules of linear perspective and he breaks them and still makes it believable. Every single space is so in-depth and it looks like you could just run straight through the hallways, hallways of, of these drawings. And he also creates, oh, and this is, I'm sorry, this is, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name or his name right, Toba Kadori. I wish that I knew how to say this name properly, but I really love the elegance of these drawings and how they also create this enterable space in a totally different way by simply using doors. I truly, truly love this artist and their work. Every piece is very minimal and every piece is enterable and very, very simplistically done, but beautifully rendered. Then you go to Julie Maritou, who takes perspective and breaks every rule. I love her. Work. It is so abstract and you could even jump into this once you get the, the rules of perspective down. You could even get into this where she does dozens and dozens of layers of marks and spaces. I, I wish that, can you see that? I mean, look at the layers of the different ways that she creates. It's just fascinating. And these are gigantic. I don't know if you've ever seen these in real life, but these are larger than life whole museum walls are these perspective drawings. She, she calls them different worlds than the one that we're in. And I think, oh, here's a great example of a close-up of one of her drawings. She brings perspective into a whole new light and I just cannot get enough of it. So I really wanted to show you and end with that. So, now that you've got some contemporary artists to inspire you and some historical artists to inspire you, let's make some perspective drawings. For your perspective drawing, what you need is paper, a ruler, or any straight edge. It could even be another book. It could be 
a magazine. You just need a straight edge. The ruler can be wooden or metal. You need a drawing pencil. I would recommend using a lighter pencil. Here I have an H pencil, which is a harder graphite, so it is lighter. But for this demonstration, so that you can really see it, I'm going to use a 5B uh, from my deep shade graphite pencils. These are, this is much uh, softer graphite and much darker so that you can see it more. Then of course you can have whatever eraser you prefer. You can have just a white plastic eraser or you can have a kneaded eraser. Mine is very cold right now. So you can have a kneaded eraser, of course a pencil sharpener, and for demonstration purposes, I am going to bring in a black Sharpie to make sure that you can see the finished product. So I am going to show you a couple different examples of what you can practice for what you can practice for perspective. And I am going to take my examples directly from this book as I find them to be very, very helpful. This is the start of One Point Perspective. And this moves a little bit further. So I'm going to utilize this example first because I think it starts at the very beginning collage yarn is sticking out. Let me push that back. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's still sticking out. That's okay. All right, so what you want to do is you want to grab your ruler and you can follow along with me or you can just watch. It's up to you because remember you can always replay this video. So what I'm going to do for this demonstration, I'm going to start with showing you how to create a box in perspective in one point and then two point. So I'm going to make a horizon line. You start with a horizon line and a horizon line is the furthest point that all of the lines will go to the line that holds the furthest point, the vanishing point. So the horizon line I'm going to, for this drawing, I'm going to make be in the very center or just above the center. Now, actually I'm going to move down to the center ish. I'm going to draw much darker so that you can see every single line that I make, but I highly, highly recommend always drawing light until you get it right. I'm going to emphasize that draw light until you get it right so that you can, if you, mess up or need to fix something, you can easily erase it. But I'm going to draw darker just so that you can really see it. So I'm making the horizon line. Okay, this is the horizon line. Then I'm going to draw the vanishing point in the center. Okay, so that is vanishing point. Now I am going to start with the basics. So I'm going to think of me being right here as the viewer facing this way and creating a box that goes from here to here from the aerial perspective to the bird's eye view to the straight on view. Now with the straight on view, where if, if, if the box was straight ahead, you would see just the front side of it, right? If this is not perfect, have patience with me. So you have a box that you are looking straight on 
without any perspective viewpoint yet. All right? So what you want to do is if I want to bring that down and show that it has some perspective, I'm going to make it follow from the vanishing point. So I make two lines, you see? This is why it's good to make sure that you erase if you need to. So I am going to bring this line down. And bring this line down. Move this box all the way down. so that you can start to get the gist of a bird's eye, or I'm sorry, an aerial view perspective, meaning you are looking down. This is still the front of the box, but now I want to be looking down on it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is from these lines leading to the horizon, leading to the vanishing point, I'm going to draw the top of the box so that it starts to show perspective as if the box is going back into space. This is called aerial view. This is called straight on view or front view. So you want to kind of picture these lines going away. And this is how you come about aerial perspective, the aerial viewpoint. So you see how it comes together one line at a time. And you want to be patient because it can really take a lot of practice, a lot of time. Now I want to show you the bird's eye view, where you are, say, looking upwards towards the underneath side of the box. So the same way that I took the box downwards, I'm going to make similar lines of the sides of the box going upwards. And I will make the front of the box again. So you want to make sure that you draw your vanishing points from the point of the box. So I am going to draw the bottom of the box connecting to the vanishing point. So you have the front of the box right here and the bottom of the box goes in between those lines. So what you end up with is the front and the bottom. And if you see, once you erase these lines, together. Now, I want to point out how if you were to see through this box, every point should be able to easily come 
to the vanishing point. That's how you know you have it measured correctly, where every point comes to the vanishing point and it still would match up. If the box was see-through, every side is successfully going back into space. You see that? So I just wanted to show you all the different ways to check. Now, this is one point perspective. And this is bird's eye view, straight on view, and aerial view with one vanishing point on the horizon line. This is the base of learning perspective. Now, you could do this with a box. You could do this with a building. You could do this with a street. Now I'm going to show you on here a couple different ways to move forward from just the box. But I'm going to make that in a, another part. So this is bird's eye view, vanishing point, straight on view to the vanishing point, and aerial view with one vanishing point. Let's move on to two. Okay, so we learned one point perspective with a box. Now I am going to show you two point perspective with a box. So, what you wanna do is grab your pencil and your ruler and I am going to make that horizon line again. So I won't label it this time because you get it at this point. This is the horizon line, which everything uh, will be held on in the background, holding the vanishing point. So we're gonna do two point perspective. So this is going to be This is one point perspective where everything goes to one vanishing point, and this is two point perspective where everything goes to two vanishing points. So I'm going to put, keep putting my materials confused. So I'm going to have. A vanishing point on this side. Remember, this is the basic two-point perspective drawing. I'm going to have one here and one here. Now, this is, as an example, this is, say, we are looking at the side of a box and you see the points of the box going in two directions. If you are an eye level with the box, you see the edge corner of the box. So you want to draw that line. Then you want to decide how tall is this box. We'll say it is here and here. So I'm going to make, I'm going to use a ruler for this. I'm just going to freehand it for now. Okay. That's the edge of the box where both sides come together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the end, the very tip of this corner of the box. I'm going to attach it to this vanishing point. Wrong pencil. I'm going to attach it to this vanishing point. So you see the edge of this box will go to this vanishing point. 
the edge of this box will also go to the other vanishing point. Just like so. Then you go to the bottom edge of the box and guess what? That also goes to this vanishing point over here and this vanishing point over here. So what you do then, you can see this is where the sides begin to form. You then want to decide, based off of what you're looking at, how far back that box goes. So I have this measured at, what did I end up doing? Just under two and a half inches. So that's about how far I will make this one. They don't have to be the same. They might not be the same and that's okay. So you see this as if you are looking at the box straight on. Here is the crease. Here are the edges of either side of the box. Here is the top of the box. And here is the bottom of the box.